Hello everyone, John Frausto with TopspinTennis.com. In this video, I'm going to do an analysis of, analysis of Novak Djokovic's forehand. I've done one on his backhand. Um, I had said that I believe his backhand is one of the top three in the world. His forehand, I don't believe, gets an, uh, enough credit. Uh, it's a very, very strong stroke. Um, is it equal to his backhand side? There could be some debate on that. But anyway, I'm gonna break down the stroke what I feel uh, makes it truly unique, and then some things that are, uh, that he has in common with other pros. Enjoy the video. All right, currently he's in the uh, hitting position. Let's go ahead and take the video back to his ready position. Uh, one thing I want you to notice here is that he is in his semi-western grip. So as he's waiting for the ball, he is waiting in that semi-western grip. So that base knuckle, that base knuckle on his hand is on bevel four. Um, one thing that's really interesting, and I want to do a video on this in the future, and I'd be interested in your thoughts. Um, after he hits a forehand, it seems like he waits in the semi-western grip. But after he hits a backhand, when he's waiting for that next ball in the ready position, it looks like he's in a continental grip. So I'd be interested in your comments below. What are your thoughts on that? Have you noticed anything? I'm definitely gonna do a video on this in the future and I wanna do it on the serve, on his return to serve as well. All right, so he's currently in the ready position, takes a good split step, and then here's that signature where he tracks the ball with the um, edge of the racket and he's in this palm down position. Um, we've talked about this before in other videos. By being palm down, that's going to really uh, uh, relax that rotator cuff. And signature position there. Love that position. Uh, very relaxed, smooth transition to the racket take back. Let's go ahead and look at the release here of the hand. So notice how he keeps both hands on the racket as he takes the uh, the takes it back and that gives us that complete unit turn by doing that so he's here and there's the release point right there um, a little higher than other pros so we have talked uh, in the past about um, keeping the hand below the level of the shoulder notice in this video how his hands are above his shoulder and he does release you know right around that three o'clock position so Boom, right there and releases. Very like free movement. You can just tell he's very relaxed. He always looks relaxed when he's playing. All right, so there's the release point. Um, let's go ahead and look at the loading phase right here. So notice in this loading phase, um, one thing that's a signature position for him, notice how his racket strings are pointing towards. So that's his hitting face right here. Notice how they're facing to the back fence. Not every pro gets into this position, but this is something that Novak does. Anybody else uh, be interested if you're watching the video, do you use the same position? Um, I'd be interested in hearing your comments on that. But look at this position. Here's that 90-10 position I talk about in the loading phase where he 90% um, of the weight is on the back foot, 10% um, is on the non-loading leg. Notice his non-hitting arm. Um, look at the extension there. And then his um, racket head is up in a vertical position. So very, very strong position here. You can see it in this video as well. Um, so it looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and look at the racket drop. There it is. Um, racket face is still pointing down to the ground here and his approach to the ball. One thing I want you to notice too is um, Novak does um, put some, some good top spin on his ball, but notice the swing path on here. It is fairly, it is low to high, but notice how it's more like a low to level position. So his ball really does get through the court. He is swinging low to high, but it's not on a steep plane. So if there's one thing you want to learn from the stroke, if you want to get that ball through the court, you still got to get below it. But notice how he is coming from low, and I almost call it like a low to level position. And that's how he's able to 
Um, still in part top spin, but get the ball through the court. All right, let's go ahead and um, one thing I want you to notice here too in this look at this video here. Look at the separation he gets between his elbow and his body. So he's not he doesn't have that alligator arm or that dinosaur arm as I like to say. He has uh, that elbow gets away from his body, and that's another way that he stays relaxed and able to generate power on the stroke. All right, let's go to the contact point. Beautiful contact point here. Uh, another thing, if you want to learn from the pros, look at how that contact point is out in front of his body. So he releases, the hips and shoulders will rotate. Notice how his hips and shoulders are now square to his target, okay? Hips and shoulders are square to the target, so he's using that angular momentum where he's loading in the ground from the ground up and then rotating into the ball. Very balanced through the stroke. He does get some decent extension here after contact. So notice the arm here. Notice how it extends. It's extending out. He's still pulling up and across the ball, but he does get some decent extension here and then pulls up and across. So a master class in the forehand. I don't think Novak gets enough credit. Um, please, in the comments section below, tell me some of the things that you're doing similar to him. Anything that you see in his stroke that he could change to make it better. Um, and also, if there are any video ideas you'd like to see in the future, please put those down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that notification button. Thank you so much for watching.